Ethernet was developed in the mid-1970s and came of age in the early 1980s as the technology of choice for businesses for local area networks. But in wide area networks, businesses have used frame relay, point-to-point -point technologies, or ATM services. Today, we're seeing an escalating trend for businesses to migrate away from those more complicated legacy networking technologies. And they're migrating to um, fully meshed cloud-based networks, such as MPLS IP VPNs, and more recently, Ethernet networks. You know, if the wide area network could be as simple as the local area network, then a business could save substantial on network administration costs. That's Brent Spooner, Director for Data and Managed Services at Exo Communications. I'm Jason Lopez. Spooner says that Ethernet provides a scalable way to deal with ever-increasing bandwidth requirements. Recent new standards for Ethernet in wide area networks and the greater availability of services have fostered greater adoption and perhaps a move toward a tipping point of mass adoption. Today, the U.S. market, well, the U.S. market for Ethernet services is now increasing at a compounded growth rate of 36%, and it's expected to reach $6 billion in 2012, according to research from IDC. So that, uh, um, that market's growing, and there's a lot of businesses that are in that mode today. Well, what's driving the thirst for bandwidth right now? Well, well, there's a number of things. You know, that's just the continuing surge in more bandwidth-intensive applications, uh, like voice over IP, video conferencing, training applications across the network, and other types of streaming media applications. Businesses continue to need connectivity between all their locations and their remote workers. That's more uh, important today than, than ever before. Uh, really, in general, you know, businesses need to grow their networks, but at the same time, and especially with the way the economic environment is today, they have to keep the cost to a minimum and reduce their network complexity. What kinds of business needs demand Ethernet technology? Well, it's the need to scale bandwidth as business needs change. For example, we can provision for a customer a 100 megabit circuit, or what we would call a 100 megabit per second port, that perhaps the customer only purchased 20 megabits per second. Uh, and then the, to increase that speed, um, the customer can simply increase from 20 to 30 to 40 megabits per second without changing out the facility. So uh, the need to scale bandwidth is one. Uh, reduced network administration costs uh, by the simplicity of having a fully meshed uh, type uh, Ethernet network uh, that looks the same as the local area network, more simple and reduced network administration costs. There's requirements to converge both voice and data over the same facilities. When you have voice, data, video running over the same network, there's requirements for a class of service. Really, to sum it up, I mean, it's more bandwidth, it's scalable bandwidth, it's universal connectivity and simplicity of the network. There's always a need for speed in computing. Can you describe... Brant, how this applies to Ethernet solutions? Um, it has to do with scalability. So businesses need to be able to size the bandwidth for each location depending on the requirements of that location. This lets them optimize what I'll call the price performance equation for that location. And to help businesses do this, we just announced a full range of new incremental bandwidth options. These would be speeds uh, where customers can select between 10 and 100 megabits per second in 10 megabit per second increments, and also between 100 megabits per second and 1 gigabit per second in 100 megabit per second increments. Another thing we've done to help customers size the locations based on their bandwidth requirements is with our Ethernet over copper technologies. Now we can provide sub 10 megabit per second links, uh, three and 5 megabits per second, as well as 15 and 20 megabits per second. I wonder if you could give an example of some of the services at these different speeds here. A hospital that has a number of locations in the metro area, and they want to do remote medicine. In other words, they'd like to have doctors in each location be able to view x-rays or other medical data and information at the other locations. In that situation, we've built a metro area gigabit per second Ethernet network to support 
high bandwidth applications, which these uh, imaging applications are, and uh, immediate response times. That's really cool stuff. Yeah, I think so, and it's, it's certainly beneficial for the hospitals. Very cost-effective and provides them with a network that supports their requirements. And it's interesting that uh, the windows of speed are all speaking to different kinds of applications that uh, customers may want to push across their networks. Can you speak to that issue, how customers size up their applications for their needs? Well, well that's right. And uh, XO is a network service provider, so you know it's really our job to provide the most cost-effective, reliable, and efficient platform for a business's IT folks to deliver their applications. So the idea, especially with Ethernet services, is to make uh, it uh, simpler and easier for the customer to manage, uh, even though it might be more complex for us as a provider to manage. And um, by having a wider variety of incremental speeds, features running email traffic between locations, then he would not require that much bandwidth. But if they've got uh, voice over IP, they might want more bandwidth. Or if there's uh, intensive database applications, uh, certainly uh, data backup type applications, then a particular location would require much more bandwidth. With that in mind, with this idea of lowering complexity for clients and also uh, making things more cost effective, what's on the horizon for the future of Ethernet technologies? Well, what's happening in the marketplace now is continuing to expand Ethernet beyond the metro area and being able to support that as a wide area networking technology between cities and between markets. And a technology called VPLS, which is an Ethernet LAN service, is where many businesses are moving. Again, it's the same idea of providing a very simple network so anywhere in the country or, in fact, internationally, customers can connect in universally with an Ethernet-type connection, both going into the network and coming out of the network. Brent Spooner is the Director for Data and Managed Services at Exo Communications.